are we sure uh, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green retire together as Warriors? Oh. Or just say all retire as Warriors because retire together, I guess, implies the same year. Are we sure they yeah, yeah. all retire as Warriors and not in some fake one day contract kind of thing? They all are one team career guys. It's a great one. I think this Draymond situation in a contract year as a declining offensive player, but a still important playoff player who's going to expect to be compensated properly who might have more value to an up-and-coming team than he does for this team. At some point, you got to make choices. We've seen it over the course of history in the league where teams at some point are like, we can't just pay everybody, you know, 30 million a year or whatever it was in 1986. And I do wonder if he's going to... I wonder how it's going to go. I had as an are we sure? Are we sure he's not going to be a distraction this year? And I don't mean that in like a super insulting way. I just mean it as like, he's in a contract year. He's got a podcast. He's very open about his life, his feelings, all that stuff. And the Warriors culture is team, 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 right? But now you're in a situation where um, he's got one more big contract in him. And I, ju- I just don't know how it's going to play out. But to answer your question, I am not sure. And I, if you gave me a bet, do all three of those guys retire as Warriors? I would say no. I would say the history of the league would say no. So, so to be clear, Steph, Steph, yes, and Clay make ninety five million dollars combined next year, which will be next Clay's, year. Clay's free agent year too, unless he's extended. Pool is going to make Pool's looking at the Tyler Hero contract today and saying, "Okay, like that benchmark." Wiggins, yeah. So they have to keep, they have to keep Wiggins. I agree. He can't be in trades. He was the number two reason that they won the title. And there's only a handful of guys like him who can guard the type of guys that he can guard and bring all the things to the table that he brings to the table. So if you're starting from scratch, I feel like Wiggins is the second most important asset on the team. As crazy as that sounds. Wiseman has one more year after this one left on his rookie deal. But then they can do, they can push it forward, right? And then it becomes that weird. That's the last year. It's $12.1 million already in year four. Kaminga's up to six that year. Moody's at four. Like those guys are going to get expensive sooner rather than later. They Are they going to pay all those guys? I I don't know. Um, Well, Moody, there's a lot of Moody buzz right now. And Moody might be the one that could be like a $20 million guy, year guy with his next contract. But the Draymond one is so fascinating because you you mentioned about he might have value to an up-and-coming team as a culture guy, mentor, deep defense first, toughness, playmaker. Detroit. Well, so it's funny because years ago when Draymond started to become a star, there was all this debate about is he really a star or is he it, – could he – could he actually be this guy outside an ecosystem that has the two greatest shooters in the history of the basketball and people in history of basketball? And people used to actually specifically say, put him on the Pistons and like he's dribble handoffing to not Steph Curry and not Clay Thompson. And he's doing all the Draymond stuff, but the talent around him is lesser. What does he look like there? And I just as a fan and I'm a huge Draymond fan, always have me been. too. I would be just fascinated to see how that would look. And, and, and it's a shame because we're talking about a Draymond that's probably t- too old now to or would be too old in this scenario to really, really make it sing. But I always thought my response to that was always, hell yeah, he'd make it work. Like, yeah, it wouldn't be as easy. It wouldn't be as prolific. But you put him on Portland with peak Dame, you put him in. I, I think his skills absolutely translate to lesser players and would elevate those players. It would be yeah. fascinating to just see it though, because he got criticized as sort of a, a product of the warriors and not a star player in his own right. And I always thought that that sold him short. A hundred percent agree. I just wonder what his next three to four years look like. I keep going back to the Ben Wallace contract that the bulls signed. But it's like, we got Ben Wallace and they got Ben Wallace a year too late, right? Where he was this incredible athlete and tangibles guy should have been the 2004 finals MVP. And, um, and I think was the best player in that entire playoffs. And, uh, and then all of a sudden the bulls, he wasn't Ben Wallace anymore, you know? And I think for these intangible guys, 
that you lose a little bit, it, it's a lot when you don't have any offense to fall back on. So I don't know how that plays out, but I do think like for a team like Detroit, maybe even a team like Atlanta, a team that recognizes stuff that he's good at, he might be worth way more money than Golden State wants to pay. I just wonder how he's going to handle it during the year because he it's going to be a respect thing for him and it should be. He's won four titles with them and his attitude is going to be, I'm Draymond Green, take care of me. Oh, like absolutely, the, the, he absolutely yeah. should say Where's that. Where's my contract? He should. So, I've won you four rings. Where's my contract? So here's the weird reality of the NBA, and maybe it won't apply here because Clay is such just sort of a, I just love being in San Francisco. I love the Warriors. just want to win. Usually when players get older and they have to have new contracts and they, they reach the point at which they recognize that their salary is going to flatten out or get a little bit lower, if that's the case. The prior salary still is sort of the defining prior that matters in those talks. So like Draymond makes $26 million. Clay makes 43. Why is it not Clay the one we're talking about as maybe he's the one they decide not to not to pony up for? Is it just because of the timing that Draymond is more a more urgent soon issue for them? Timing. Is, is it or timing. is it just because you can't separate the Splash Brothers? He's culturally just too I, to me, as a fan, as, as a person who loves the NBA, loves basketball, you want those three guys to be joined at the hip forever, don't you? Or do you want do you do you want to see the opposite? Like, let's see one of these guys in unfamiliar water. I think Clay. It's it's a slightly different level than Draymond because of the Curry connection. Not that Draymond doesn't have his own Curry connection, but just that Clay and Steph thing. Hard to imagine either of them ever, ever not being on the Warriors. But with that said, there was the ramp us. I think you and I both know that that was a little more serious than maybe it came out. Curry finally acknowledged it. They definitely kicked the tires pretty hard. I think Lacob was driving it. And I think Clay would have been the one in the trade. I'm not reporting that. Ooh. I'm just, I'm do doing it by deduction. Who's in that trade? I don't think it would have been Wiggins. And it, if you're going to trade for Durant, it had to have been Draymond, Wiggins, or Clay had to be in the trade. You couldn't have patched it together any other way. And I just think, and maybe that's why they never seriously pursued it because that would have been, you can't trade for Durant and give up Wiggins and all the other stuff, you know, if I you're assumed, trying to win the title. I assumed it was Wiggins, but I, that, really? again, I just assumed. I, I have no inside info. I am guessing. I did reporting around this and I don't even remember if I got that far. It was I don't think like, it ever got too serious where they, because I think everybody was just trying to calm down Lacob for like three weeks. <laughs> 